Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. I've been working on the 32. I've just been having a little bit of a session and I have... Well, basically, I sorted out a pair of wheel cylinder castings that were drilled okay. And I was able to clean up the bores to a, an acceptable level. I've, um, you know, used a, one of those honing little brake cylinder hones. And I've rebuilt them using all the guts out of those brand new but wrongly drilled cylinders. So I've been able to get all the well cylinders rebuilt. I found the suitable hardware, fitted new spring washers, and what I've done now, I've because the back axle is back in now, I've refitted all the brake pipes and uh, I've made some little clips. Made the little clips. You, you, those originals there. That's a new one, and that's a new one. So I've made those little clips and put everything in place. Just a little t tip. I put the banjo there, and I was trying to get this uh, thing on, and I found it better. And I found it better to kind of come here with a pair of pliers, round like that, and squeeze it on, rather than trying to hammer it. So that's a little tip for you. Um, that's actually, I was just looking at that, so I don't think it needs a clip there. <coughs> I ended up with one clip left over. Um, same there, I used a pair of pliers to squeeze the clip on. But uh, I could have hammered that one on. So this is just in place now. Now, what I want to do is um, strip, clean and inspect this master cylinder. I bought two of these quite a while ago and I seem to remember that they weren't very clean inside. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it now because I'm just wrapping up now from this previous little session. The master cylinder mount is in place, so in theory, when I've cleaned up the master cylinder, I've bolted the master cylinder on there, that can be bolted to it, and all this, all these brakes are then done. Those that have been following will know that uh, I shortened the torque tube, I shortened, well, actually lengthened a shorter drive shaft to the right length. I kind of, to reuse the word rebuilt is probably a bit of a stretch, but I cleaned and have lubricated the spring. I fitted the spring um, and I took one leaf out so that these clamping bolts come just right and there's a little gap on each one between the clamp and the frame so they are clamping up properly and they are nice and tight so that's good. I bolted the shock absorbers on to those little brackets that are attached to those um, braces there so those are bolted on they're Armstrong shocks I don't know the application strengthening plates are in place on the inside of the frame this is an early frame, it's, it's got those strengthening plates there. It doesn't have the extra double thicknesses on the chassis that uh, some of the lighter ones had. I've lowered it down onto the axle stands. The axle stands are now fitted underneath the axle and at a lower height, which I'm more happy about. I, f I feel that they're more stable like that. And I've got my new axle stands in place on the front there down at the minimum height that they will go to and they're, they're nice they're quite stable like that as well um, and I've sorted out these I think these are English uh, heavy duty half clamshells which I was just sort of offering to see if they kind of went into position 
so that's a little couple of hours session there doing the uh, wheel cylinders doing the brake pipes tightening everything up I'm quite happy with all the, the way that's all gone back together I now need to address the brakes I've got to do a sanity check that I've got all the actual hardware you know when I was doing this job here and I said one thing leads to another and sometimes you have to jump ahead I mean I can't just assemble those brakes with brake shoes can I because I need to make sure that the brake shoes are radiused to the drums so I need to finalize which drums I'm going to use and I'm hoping that the wide five drums and hubs that I've got are serviceable I think I'm going to run this on wide fives just for a change just something to be a little bit different I've straightened these out these these brackets these are a bit bent I've straightened these so hopefully they will support the shoes nicely so the next logical thing is the drums make sure they're cleaned up I don't need to skim them I've got a pair of drums for the back that I measured and they're at 40 thou over and they look like, like they had been skimmed and not used I've probably got to reline a set of shoes I will reline a set of shoes and size them to fit the 40 thou drums and then I can assemble the brakes then I can put the hubs on hubs and drums on and the same on the front I've got one drum that I skimmed that's around about 50 thou over and I've got the other drum that um, hasn't yet been skimmed so skimming that drum is one of the jobs I need to do that's the front one that has been skimmed and I, I was radiusing that shoe to suit that's one for the front okay enough uh, rattle from me so there's the chassis looking good back axle in place bolted in I didn't end up using the wheel cylinders that I was going to use these were the wheel cylinders I was going to use and these ones aren't drilled correctly but what I did I made spaces and put those in there but I hope that these will be okay more scrap that I've bought okay right then thanks very much then I'll uh, catch you on the next one cheers then bye Hello. I was thinking about how to take the lifters out of this motor so I can just store them until I'm ready to build it and I had an idea look I've got a, a lace that's out of a pair of trainers that I was going to throw away so what I thought I'd do I thought I'd start at number eight cylinder pop the lifter out tight onto there and then work my way down the engine and end up at number one let's give it a go maybe I could get them out a little bit and take the cam out first there's the cam okay cam's out this is number one that's number eight so what I thought I'd do is I'd put that on there like that that's why I've used a shoelace because it's got the you know the bit on the end that's stiff so I thought I'd tie that on there and then I know that the one that's tied on is number eight then I'll just work my way up and thread them on I'm only keeping them in order really because I've set the valves whoops I'm only keeping them in order because I've set the valves I'm glad I've got these out because I can see little bits of rust starting to form so it'd be good to get everything you know put away and oiled So when I come to put them back in, the first one off the string will be number one exhaust and the second one number one inlet and so on down the engine. 
you know, when you're just trying to think of how to do something, and you you know, you know, I was in the house, I was, I don't know what I was doing, but I thought, well, how can I get all those lifters out and keep them in order? And I thought, oh, get an egg box and 16 little bags and 16 bits of paper, and I thought, oh, there's got to be an easier way. Imagine the old timers, they've, they've been doing this for years. They're thinking, oh, blimey, you should have done this or you should have done that. But, you know, <laughs> just an idea. There we go, look. Look at that, that's pretty neat, isn't it, really? It's like a Christmas decoration. That's cool. I like that. Okay, so what shall I do? What I'll do then, I'll just kind of... I'll also tie it on off at this end. I'll tie it on that one there. But what I'll do, I'll just sort of... Um, I know that the end with the long... Oh, it's only wrapped through, but that's okay. No need to really tie it. I know that the end with the long string on it, this end, is, is number one. Number one exhaust. It's kind of self-tightening. Okay, there we go, set of lifters. So I'll put those in a plastic bag then and uh, put, squirt some oil on them and that'll preserve them. Another little job done. Not a biggie, but you know, they're not all earth shattering, are they? Thanks a lot then, see you later, bye. brakes. Okay. I went on a series of searches through the place because I knew somewhere I must have, um, for instance, you know, these pivot points and things. And luckily I was able to find a box that had got virtually everything in it that I wanted. So over here now, I'm once again, I must apologise for the mess. I tend to work in a sort of messy not an ordered chaos, but a messy chaos. So there are all the brake hardware pieces that I need for the front. Because I've got the lighter type brakes on the front. And these are the parts that I couldn't find. And I've cleaned all these. This is all the hardware for the back, which is the older type. But what I was very pleased to find, and amongst these parts, were four original springs because I was moaning wasn't I about the repro springs being too strong so I've got all the hardware there for the front and rear brakes the next thing I was on the search for was all the the next things that I was on the search for was the handbrake mechanisms again I knew I must have some of those somewhere as well. Get rid of that spider. Um, again, I, I looked and looked, and in the end I found this set of brake shoes, which are the early type, and they are the ones for the rear with the handbrake pieces on them. Now I recognise these, because these are off my coupe, the good thing about these shoes is that they're riveted, not bonded. So today's job is to clean up these shoes and clean up these mechanisms and reline these shoes. It isn't a job that I've been looking forward to, but I'm pleased to have found all the parts, found all the parts. So I'll start by dismantling them and getting all the brake handbrake parts off and then I'll drill all the rivets and carry on. So you don't need to see all that dirty work going on. I'll bring you back when there's a little bit more to show. Right, so I've had a go at cleaning these shoes up. And I, um, I was very careful. You have to remember that these things probably had a lot of exposure to asbestos. So I washed them all down thoroughly um, and um, I wire whirled them, but I made sure I was wearing a good mask while wire whirling them. And um, I think three of the four have a Ford stamp on them. 
but they've all got that distinctive kind of depression there and the thinning at the end and the thinning at that end as well you know so that they are pucker items from back in the day they're not a modern repro but anyway they are a good set of shoes and the fact that they were riveted made it very easy to get the linings off it's a different matter if they're bonded so I'm going to have a go at riveting the new linings on now I've got some linings that I bought quite a few years ago and some rivets so I'm going to have a go at putting those on uh, the ones that have the short lining the gap goes towards the pivot end in other words, the lining goes towards the wheel cylinder end okay I'll bring you back when I've got more to show okay um, I've done three of the shoes I'm going to try and do the last one but I want to just try and capture it I've got a little drilling vice here with a little pin in it with a 5 16 head and I've got a centre punch in there and I've got a brake union there so the idea is what I've been doing offer the thing up offer the shoe up you got to start somewhere so I've just been putting a rivet in the end just well you're gonna be on the blind side I'll kind of work around so you can see a bit better from there that sort of nestles into the hole and then I bring the spiky thing down the, the punch down I'm just gonna sort of start that one like that without going too mad and then going to the other end now what I found is these now that's gone but it hasn't gone all the way in so I'm going to use this like that over it to kind of uh, get it kind of that's it get it pushed right the way through like that can you see that it's through now And just start that one off I'm just kind of using this spike just to wobble it around and get that in there kind of working around backwards so that you can see from that side just starting these off so they don't fall out I was doing them with like a, a punch and a hammer but it was genuinely one of those jobs where you needed three hands I know there are specific kind of tools for doing this but I don't have one you've got to be careful about trying to force it too much I managed to crack the lining on one of the other ones that's got those two those two and those two in so hopefully these you know famous last words I think these were the uh, cheaper of the linings when I bought them you could buy molded or uh, woven and these were the moulded ones I think I mean I've had these probably 10 years I've always managed to find actually up until now I've been able to find reasonable usable second hand ones You know, you take them off and they're still serviceable, so I think, okay, I'll use those again. But this is the first time that I've kind of uh, had to do this relining job. So I thought I'd just kind of show you generally. Oh, oh, 
thing about these, they're aluminium, they're not magnetic, so if you drop one, you can't uh, pick it up. Right, okay, let's try this slightly a different way. Let's put it on there. So I'm a bit awkward because I'm working around backwards. Let me just do this one this way around. So it's, I'll do it like that, and you can see still. You can still see anyway, can't you? There, okay. Just get it started like that. And it would appear that because they know that people are only human, they have actually put an extra rivet in the packet. Okay, good. So, what I'm going to do now is just um, finish them up. Just by, you know, doing them the same, but a bit harder. Just make sure that they're down. Which they can't fail to be, really. I think it's better if you can have a setup where it's kind of preloaded, like that, you know, preloaded in that way. There's going to be old timers that know a lot more tricks about this. This is the first time I've done this. But on the strength of, I've just done three and this is the fourth. <laughs> you know, I feel like um, I've been able to do it okay. The other one I did before, which you may, have, may or may not have seen on a video, I kind of did it in a similar way, but using uh, a piece out of my brake flaring kit to flare them, but this is easier, far easier. I've probably done this, these four shoes in the time that it took me to do one by the other method. I think it is easier to get them all in loosely. Like lots of things, isn't it? You 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 put everything in, then you tighten up the bolts after. You put all the bolts in rather, then you tighten them all. tiny little press somewhere but I, th but I think it would have took quite a while to you know make some tool tooling for it the other thing I did I put a clean pair of gloves on before I started to minimize you know getting mess on it I am a little bit messy but you can't help that I've done four now but that's not a bad job, is it, really? I think that's okay. Two long ones. Two short ones. Now this one, I tried to kind of pull that hole there, and it broke through. So, I'm not ultra happy about it. And the other one cracked as well. I'm not ultra happy about that, but I'm thinking that the, the loads are sort of... This is a rear shoe. So the loads are in that direction towards the other rivets. This linings are all going to push towards those other rivets. So I think I think it'll be okay. It'll have to be. Okay, good. So there we are, set of shoes. When I've got the drums cleaned up, I will do a rudimentary arcing job on these shoes and then um, I will fit all the shoes and the brakes. Here are the things that I've just cleaned up. There were some rough edges there so I've just hit them with a file. They're okay now.
nice, nice part actually. This one's a little bit more knocked about, so that that's okay, serviceable. And there's the little rivets and things. There's two short ones and two long ones, and the little horseshoe clips which I've just cleaned up. Come up quite well, I thought. All perfectly serviceable. So they can go in the box as well. So there's a box full of stuff there, all the bits and pieces, all the bits and pieces to put the brakes together, and the shoes are done. So, again, you need to sometimes hold back because one thing leads to another and the next thing is radiusing the shoes so once the shoes are radiused all this stuff can go you know go on the on the chassis okay i'm going to call it good at that because there's a that's radiusing them is a, is a whole nother job so thanks very much for joining me then i'll catch you on the next one bye Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. I'm in a position where I'm going to try and start assembling this motor. Um, I've got some of the parts ready, and then so. But what I think I want to do is to get the cam, the lifters, the valves, and the crank in place because I think they're better off in place than sitting around. And then I can look at the rods and pistons. And I'll just I'll just do it little bit by little bit. But what I want to try and do today is get what what I think I'm going to do is do a trial fit of the crank. Check that that goes in nicely and turns okay. And then I'll probably take the crank out, put the cam and lifters in. And then put the crank back in timed to the cam. That's what I think I'm going to do. I put some of that chainsaw oil on it after I washed it, and it, it's helped to keep it nice and uh, stop the rust forming. Some interesting, when I say interesting, what I mean is kind of worrying <laughs> patterns in here. So I think I'm going to just get a, a riser blade. I'm just going to scrape this area. A bit more worried about this one. Looks like they may have spun at some time. The bearings that were in it didn't spin, but maybe something spun before. I can feel some roughness there. And I've noticed on one of the bearings there's some roughness in, in one area. So I'm going to clean these. Rather, I'm going to scrape them, just make sure there's nothing sticking up. Okay. Got my bearings here. So what I'll try and do is match up the marks on the back of the bearings which might be harder to do than I thought or I could just put them in willy-nilly yeah I think that's that one I'll clean the back of it with this riser blade I think once you've dragged a riser blade over it, you've ensured there aren't any bits sticking up.
that one, that one goes in there because there's some marks there and I can see them there so that one goes in there you're not going to take any metal off by that but you might just knock the top off a, a lump or something that's embedded in there dig something out that's embedded in there so that's one of the front ones so one of these is the front I think that's that one so that one there ought to be this one the bearings look okay actually Hello, sweet. All right, Jack. Hello, Dad. Right. I'm just putting the bearings in. So I'm just... Hello. My son's here, Jack. He's come out to um, either help me or watch me or uh, just kind of take an interest or make himself useful. A, a mixture of any and all of the above. What am I doing, Jack? I'm just um, trying to work out which bearings go where. I'll put those ones in. I should have took more notice when I took them apart. I don't think it matters, okay. We'll just plump for putting that one in there, I think. Get it rid. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get the crank, put it in there, and see if it spins all right. While the crank was still in the lathe, I don't know if you saw the bit where I was polishing it, and the last thing I did was to run it backwards. Well, I thought about it afterwards, and I've before I took it off the lathe, I've run it forwards, so the last polishing action was in a forwards direction. Um, just in case there's like a surface finish that favours going the one way than the other. Just put a little bit of oil on there and stick a bit of oil on there. Just put some oil on them bearings and spread it there, nice and even. It's going to come back out again anyway. I'm just putting it in just to check. I'm just going to go and get a clean bit of rag. Camera angles, Jack, camera angles. And it's, yeah, just, just a little bit and then spread it round with your finger. Don't need to go too mad. It's only just so it got a little bit of lube. And on this, this one, make sure there's some on the front and the back there. That's it. Because the, the crank rubs on that bit. Okay? Oh, I'll tell you what I want. This is an um, engine mount bolt. I'm going to put it in the end of the crank and it makes a handy handle to lift the crank. Do you want to put the crank in Jack? It's quite heavy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, let's, let's do an end each then. You grab that end, since there's two of us. It's quite heavy. Just move that. Okay, it's gently down towards you a bit. That's it. Lift. That's it. There you go. Right, see if it spins. See if you can turn it. it turns, doesn't it? Okay, let's put the bearings on then as a test. This is the front one. This is the front one, because you can see the holes are offset. The holes are more towards that side there. The, the long side is the front. Let's just uh, put a bit of stick them on there. Slick them rather, not stick them. Okay. Put a bit of oil on that one and I'll give you that. No need to go mad, Jack. It's only just so it don't bind up. Let's put a, get a where's that laser. Uh, okay. See that? Now, can you see there's a notch? Yeah. There. 
See the notch there? That's the line up with that. Well, you have the two notches on the same side. Okay. That's it, mate. And mind your fingers. We'll just do the back one as well. Just give this a little scrape. You have to go kind of slow and methodical on these jobs. I can see a little tiny bit of rust in this bearing, so I'll just give it a scrape. Okay. Put that in there, Jack. Align that, align that tag into there. That where that tag goes there. You have to get it squared up. That's it. Now you can see this end has to go that end there. Well, it's not only the notch, it's the whole shebang. It won't go in the wrong way. Hang on, let's stick a bit of oil on there. Okay. What did you put some on? Let's see if this is focused all right. I'll bring it up a bit as soon as we've got people in the shot. That's it, just... Oh, stuff. oh well, yeah, you have to watch that. No, no, you to take it right off so we ain't got any bits of gloves stuck up it, that's it. That's what you have to watch out for. Okay, tap it down with that. Thaw from round the corner. Okay. Let's bolt it down then. I might just leave it in place actually. Got the, the right nuts there. Put one of them on each of them studs, Jack. And I'll go and get the socket. And, uh, you know, you mean what I'm trying to say is when they're loose, you can just do them by hand. You, you put them on as far as you can. I haven't actually put a tap through these, so there's, there is some dirt coming out, so that's not good. That's it. Just do them like that, and then we'll do them with a the ratchet. Like. That makes it nice and easy. You can just spin it round then. Don't, don't disturb that dirt, I'll get it with the vacuum cleaner. Because you've got to try and keep everything really clean. Yeah. I've washed the nuts and everything, but I hadn't put a tap through them, so they've, a little bit of dirt's come out. Okay, so what we'll do, get this now. Take that off. This is new. So just do them kind of, see this look, just kind of do it moderate tight like that. See what I'll do, I'll put the locks on. Hold it at the top there, Jack. So you're not kind of putting a bend on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to resist that force with the other end, okay? Does it turn? Yeah? Okay, that's good, isn't it, then? That's good, isn't it? Now we've got a choice now. Now that we've proved that it's all right, we can take it out again, just to give us more room, or we can leave it in. What I'm doing, I'm just proving that it's not binding up. Yeah. It's not stuck. So let's whiz it out again. We'll stick it on there and then we'll put the cam and lifters in. So you bust them all loose again with that. What you do, you flip that little lever over on the top. Do Just bust them all loose and then switch to the T handle. Try, try and hold it straight with your right hand jack. That's it, you can come in with the T-handle then and get the nuts off. I just wanted to prove that everything's alright down at the bottom in there. See, to take them all the way off with that, it'd be like a lot of yeah. waving around in mid-air. So, put the T-handle on and whiz them off. We could use a brrrr brrr brr gun, but uh, yeah, we could do, couldn't we? Shall we, for a 
manly man skills. Yeah, we we'll use it. Now we've proven we can do it by hand, we'll use this. Sh shove it on her. Yeah, now look, that's under, so just take them off. They'll come, just come whizzing off now, that will. And just put them in that pile of nuts and bolts over there. Yeah, what I'm trying to do is just loosen the bearing cap. Coming with um, completely the wrong tools. <laughs> yeah. Take that off, Jim. You have to kind of pull it straight, otherwise it gets. Ooh, uh -huh. You got it. If you can get it started by lifting, and what we're doing now, can you see that there's dirt on that? Look, yeah, when take it off me and then put it over there, but wipe that dirt off with a bit of rag because cleanliness is this the key. Can you see on these, Jack, where somebody's can you see somebody's filed a notch there? Look, yeah, I'm kind of showing the camera as well. There's a notch there and two notches there. Somebody in the past has filed them in to say that's the front one and that's the second one. And then we're at the front. But what I just showed you, you don't need to do that because they are different. And um, you can tell them different. You can tell them which way. So let's pick this up there and we'll put it down over there. It might get tangled. Don't get too mad. Let me, let me kind of lead. That's it. Put it along the length of there. That's it. Okay, we're going to put the cam in then. Here I have one of the rear brake assemblies sort of mocked up. And what I did last night, I came out last night and here is one of the rear drums and there's the other one look I'm a messy worker <laughs> sorry about that okay so but what I did last night I used this piece of abrasive paper in there and I took the shoes that I relined yesterday and rubbed them around on there see how that's that way around this is the rear on the right because if this is the right that's the front if that's the top that's the front so this is the rear one so it goes that way around now this isn't going to stay still because um, you know the paper is going to move with the with the shoe but imagine that I'm holding that with my finger and I rub this back and forth rub this back and forth and then what you look for is the pattern to have kind of been rubbed away over a good part of the surface there wasn't a lot to do because these are actually only on a very slight oversize they're 40 thou over so these shoes matched in pretty well virtually from the go anyway so that's what I did and I, I did all the shoes and I've just labelled that one there with a little R to indicate that that's the right hand one so what I thought I would try to do today this morning is assemble up one side because these have been done these have been done on the left hand drum and I thought I would just try and assemble up this handbrake mechanism and, and the rear brakes. I wonder if you put the shoe in play for, place first and then put that on after. Yeah, I think that would be okay, wouldn't it, to do that? And you just put that on, don't you, and squeeze it. Yeah, I think I might do that. I'll leave the handbrake stuff off. Okay. Right, 
let's get this stuff safe. Let's have a think about grease. Thinking if I use this brush, I won't get it all on my fingers. Just concentrate on one at a time. Okay, I lost my camera then, but I did manage to get that button bolt in there. What I was just saying to myself was that the uh, the nuts don't go on cleanly, so I need to just run a die through the nuts. I think the bolts are okay. Just do it here, like just because it's not cutting the thread; it's just cleaning it out. Good, a good set of taps and dies is one of the most valuable thing when you're messing with old cars and trying to reuse hardware. Okay. More grease on there. Get around the back there. That's spinning on nicely now. I think the easy way to do this, because you're kind of working blind on this second one, is to put this in here, find that, find that alignment there, put it in there, get that into, get that in there. Like that. Can you see that down there at the bottom? So what I've done, I've put the the bolt in. Right, that's in there with a the flat at the top. There's a flat on this bolt. Swing that up. Put that in. There we go. Lovely. That was easy. Okay. I've struggled with those before. I'm not 100% sure which way around the spring has to go. I think there's enough room for it to go like that. I mean, these shoes probably aren't back. pliers look diamond Duluth Dia Diam alloy That's it Okay good Right then So now I suppose it might be a good idea to put the cable in, mightn't it? The cable that, you know, for the handbrake. I'm assuming that that piece... Is this the right side? Hang on. I'm, sure, I'm assuming that that piece is shaped so it goes over the spring like that. I think that's okay. Right, so let's put a bit of grease on here. I'll 
I'll be able to put the cable in after, I think. Get that on there. I wonder if there's supposed to be like a, one of them little um, thingy, thingy bob washers, you know, one of them wavy washers. I haven't got one anyway, regardless, so. So that can go on there. And I believe you just squeeze these together then. That's all right. At least I was able to put that in after the event, you know. That's the important thing. Right, there's a little peg on the back of this one, isn't there? Here somewhere in line with the spring. And then that goes up there. Like that. Okay. I think these shoes are out quite a way. Then uh, this goes. On there. That goes on there. Squeeze the ends. There you go. That's all right. Okay. Eleven sixteenths. So there's the first lesson, isn't it? Make sure, sure the adjusters are all, all the way back before you start. Yeah, that would have made it slightly easier to get the spring on, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's back. Okay. Right. So that's it, isn't it? That's the handbrake mechanism. That's all the mechanism in place. And the spring returns it all. Okay, good. And I haven't put my fingers all over the shoes, which is good. Now, these bottom ones, the, the centre pops on the end, need to go to the middle. Okay, I think that's pretty well to the middle. I think this is round the wrong way, really. That's in now. So they're in and they're in. So I suppose I could. I'm not going to fit the drum, but I can at least, you know, put it over. You know, just temporarily fit it. Okay, everything looks okay. Only okay. <laughs> not great. So this should just go on there now. Haven't got a key in it. There we go, lovely. Okay. That wash is really heavily bowed. I'll, I'll make some new, I'll make some new ones. There we go. Lovely. Okay. There will be um, like an adjustment procedure where I need to kind of gen up on it, to be honest. So that is all right, I think. And I'm going to make a, you know, a drum retainer to go there. Okay, that's good, isn't it? That's one side done. You don't need to see me do the other side, so I'm going to call it good at that. Thanks very much for joining me in the garage, then. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.